In 2016, Gallup took a national representative simple random sample of 2,027 adults and asked them about their soda consumption. The survey shows that 24% mostly drink diet soda. This survey of 2,027 adults also found that a total of 56% drink mostly either regular or diet soda. Is this evidence that the majority of American adults drink mostly either regular or diet soda? This problem is going to demonstrate how to perform a one proportion Z test when you're given a percentage of the sample instead of the number X of the sample, which is going to result in a value of X, which is a decimal and not a whole number. The first thing to determine about this hypothesis test is whether it's a hypothesis test about a population mean or a population proportion. We're asked if this sample is evidence that the majority of American adults drink either regular or diet soda. A majority exists when the percentage or proportion is more than 50%. Therefore, this is a test about a proportion. To make a decision about the question being asked, we could test the claim that the proportion or percentage is greater than 50%. The first step in setting up this hypothesis test would be to write the claim that P is greater than 0 0.50. Step two is to write the opposite of the claim, which is P is less than or equal to 0 0.50. Step three is to identify the null hypothesis, which in this case is the opposite of the claim because it contains the equal sign. Step four is to label the alternative hypothesis, which in this case is the claim. In the TI-83, we will go to the STAT button, Tests menu, and select number five, the one proportion Z test. The input into the one proportion Z test will be P subscript zero is equal to 0 0.05, which comes from the number in the null hypothesis. The letter N stands for the sample size, which in this case is 2,027. The letter X stands for the number of adults in our sample who drink mostly either regular or diet soda. Since 56% of our sample drink mostly either regular or diet soda, we need to multiply 0.56 times 2,027. In doing so, the resulting number is 1,035.12. In deciding the inequality sign to use, we look at the inequality found in the alternative hypothesis. Since the inequality sign is greater than, we select greater than from the three choices given. However, when we click calculate, we see an error statement telling us that something is wrong with the domain. The domain is the input. Selecting either enter or the number one brings us back to the home screen and going back to the set button, Test menu, and again selecting number five, the one proportion Z test, we see our original input. The reason we received an error statement is that the input for the letters X and N must both be whole numbers. Therefore, we will round 1135.12 to the whole number 1135. Now, when we go to and click calculate, we see the output for this hypothesis test. Under one proportion Z test, we first see the alternative hypothesis. Next, we see the test statistic Z equal to approximately 5.40. P is equal to 3.39 and P is the probability value. However, we know that probability cannot be more than one. And if we look further, we see E negative eight after the 3.39. This stands for scientific notation. Specifically, the P value is a decimal with seven zeros after the decimal point and then the numbers 339. So the P value is essentially zero. Since the P value is very low, in fact, the lowest it can possibly be, we reject the null hypothesis. By rejecting the null hypothesis, we fail to reject or support the alternative hypothesis, which is in this case the claim. I did this problem to demonstrate how to perform a one proportion Z test when you're given a percentage of the sample instead of the number X in the sample 
and what to do when the resulting calculation gives you a decimal instead of a whole number for the number x.